All right, welcome back. Today, <clears throat> end of the deload period. I'm not going to film the whole session because you don't need to see me doing light variations on other stuff. I do intend to go moderately heavy on my jerk variation today. So we're going to be doing a power jerk from the front rack, but we're going to go off the blocks. We're not going to dip into that jerk. So I know a lot of people are going to be, what's the specific reason for doing this? Sometimes I don't have very specific reasons on why I do certain variations. I just like to play with things, see how it translates. If it does, if it doesn't, then I know. With the block variation that I'm doing, the reason that I'm doing this is because I've had a lot of heavy eccentrics throughout the course of this training block. So the last four weeks or so, heavy eccentrics on the squat, heavy eccentrics on the bench press, different that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to take the eccentric load away from the movement, but still be explosive. That's why I'm going off the blocks. So the barbell will be, obviously I'll have plates on, so it'll be a little bit higher. All I'm going to be doing is bringing myself down underneath, and then from the blocks exploding up, catching that barbell up overhead. So I'm just eliminating that dip or eccentric load when it comes to doing power jerk for no other specific reason that I've already done a lot of eccentric work previously throughout the week. I don't want to keep hammering it over and over. This allows me to get some really fast concentric movement, be explosive, not accumulate a ton of fatigue. I can do heavy sets on this and then the next day still feel great, not feel like I'm very heavy. And part of that reason is I'm not going to be fighting against that eccentric load and exploding up out of it. So not a very specific reason. I don't know if these are going to transfer well over into, let's say, a power jerk, but it's just a variation that I like to do. So we're going to warm up on this, build to a moderately heavy single today, and then that's going to be the whole video. So stay tuned, make sure to like and subscribe, and then let's see what we can hit. All right, first one up set. What I like to do off the blocks, well, first off, block height should be lower than your normal dip in your jerk position. So when you got that barbell on your shoulders and you dip and drive, whatever that bottom position is, you're going to want these blocks to be a little bit lower than that. Reason I like to have a little bit lower is that may I have to get down and start driving from a deeper position. Ideally, if you can get strong from a deeper position, then when you go into your jerk, that should create a little bit more strength from that shorter range of motion in that dip and drive. Whether that transfers over specifically, I don't know, but I'm going to be doing some power jerks in the next block, so we're going to find out. But the way I like to set this up, start with the barbell out in front of you a little bit, roll it into your shoulders, and explode out of that bottom position as quickly as possible. say 165 would be like a good maybe 170 I don't know 130 felt easy let's go one we'll go 150 next yeah we're gonna go 150 next and then I don't know 130 felt the 
the same as 100. So we're going to go 150. Maybe that will be, give me a better tail on what's possible for the heavy lift today. 150. The rest I'm taking in between these is about 90 seconds, 2 minutes. You don't need a ton of rest because it's such a quick movement that you don't need to take full rest in between until really you start getting to, you know, 90% plus on some of these reps, which, but I don't know what 90% plus on this movement is because I've never truly done a heavy max out from this position. So 150. We'll start taking 10 kilo jumps, 160, 170, 175. If things are still feeling as good as they are right now, then I'm probably just going to see how heavy I can go. It's supposed to be moderate to heavy, but I might just say screw it and go for it. this movement 
is start off, like let's say you're gonna do a four to five week training block using this specific variation. What I would do is probably do like week one and two, you wanna be in that four rep range-ish. Maybe do 12 to 16 total repetitions on that, somewhere around 65 to 75% for those first two weeks, just to build familiarity with movement, some coordination. It is a little bit different than doing a regular jerk, but just to kind of build a foundation on how that's gonna feel. Then maybe week three, you bump it up to 75 to 80-ish percent, still doing sets of like threes and fours on that. And then the last couple weeks of that, start tapering it down to heavy singles or doubles, and then use that heavy single or double as kind of a checkpoint. What I would assume is I should be able to power jerk more using that little bit of a dip and drive versus going straight off of blocks. So use that heavy double or single as kind of like a 90% mark on what you think you should be progressing towards. So let's say for me on the next block, I'm gonna be doing power jerks from a front rack position. I think if I hit 180 right now, that means in my head, I'm thinking 190 to 195, possibly 200 should be possible going towards the next training block. And I would progress my power jerks from probably threes and fours down to one and two again. That way I can build some volume, hit some more repetitions at that 75 to 80% range, maybe the 85% range, and then start tapering it down as I go for a heavy single, all while also doing other pressing movements throughout the training block. So like for me, I'm doing bench presses, I'm doing overhead shoulder work with dumbbells, delt raises, all sorts of different things to kind of build strength and structure within the shoulder complex, different row variations, also like pull-ups, chin-ups, any variation of any kind of overhead pulling is also going to be good for your shoulders and specifically like overhead pressing. So using all that together, trying to build to a heavy 1RM, um, and that's kind of the goal on what I'm thinking about for my next training block. As I start going through it, I always write it out in like four or five week periods, and then as I go through it, it always changes. What I think I'm going to do at the beginning of a training block never really is what I end up doing towards the end of a training block. Sometimes there's days where you just go in, everyone's felt this, where it's like, all right, today's the day, even though I programmed my heavy day for next week, I feel like it's today, so we're just gonna do it now, and then maybe you taper off a little bit sooner. You know, it all comes down to just having the ability to be flexible within your training, and then also knowing and being smart, feeling when you're hot, knowing that you're tired, and being able to back it off or push it whenever you can. So, 180, we'll see how it goes. Such a quick, snappy movement. 
that you can go heavy on something like this at the end of a deload period and be able to walk into your next training block feeling more fresh and feeling ready, which is what I like to do. I don't like to just go light and easy for a complete week when I do a deload. I like to hit periodically throughout that week something that's going to be, you know, a max intent. Like on Monday, I did, you know, starting on Tuesday, I did a max muscle snatch, knowing that like the heaviest I could probably go on a muscle snatch is going to be around 75% of what my true 1RM snatch is going to be. So like total fatigue for the CNS is going to be low, even though it's a max of 10. Something like this, 180, I mean, I've jerked 200, so I'm at 90% of what my regular jerk would be. But the jerk is such a, such a short, fast movement that you don't accumulate a ton of fatigue. You could generally, those two movements specifically, snatches and jerks, you could generally go heavy on them pretty frequently in a training block and not accumulate a lot of fatigue just because those two movements are going to be such quick explosive movements and they're not going to be extremely heavy loads compared to like a back squat or a deadlift, something that for me I'm going to be doing you know 250 to 300 kilos on a movement like that, that's going to accumulate a lot of fatigue, stress the CNS, get me feeling like I'm sluggish and slow the day after, maybe even create a little bit of muscle soreness. So I stay away from hitting heavy reps on those during my deload periods, and I'll stick with like a power clean, a muscle snatch, a jerk, something along those lines. So that's going to be it for today. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.